Our animal group is fish under the name of Chondrichthys and Osteichthys. These two fish fall under the taxonomic level class. The Osteichthys class contains only bony fishes. For example, there's the comb tooth blenny, sunfish, moray eel, lionfish, emperor angelfish, peacock flounder, and more. The class Chondrichthys contain cartilaginous fish, meaning they're made out of muscle tissue instead of bones. Some species of fish in this class include sharks, rays, smoothhound, sturgeon, larger spotted dogfish, and a few uncommon fish such as sawfishes and chimeras. Class Chondrichthys are jaw vertebrates with paired fins, paired nares, and scales. They also have a heart with its chambers and series. They're known to have asymmetrical caudal fin and unprotected gill slits of five or more pairs. Basically, the class Osteichthys include fishes that have skeletons made up of bone tissue instead of cartilage. They have five pairs of gill slits protected by an operculum, meaning gill covers. The class Osteichthys is an extremely diverse group of 20,000 different species. The first essential function we'll discuss is feeding. The food goes down to where it is further processed in finger-like pouches called pyloric cica. The pyloric cica produces and discharges digestive enzymes and absorbs nutrients from digested food. Their intestines complete the process of digestion and nutrient absorption. A fish's respiration is functioned by their gills. Most fish exchange gases using gills located on either side of the pharynx, which is basically their airway. Gills are made up of feathery, thread-like structures called filaments. Each filament contains a network of fine capillaries. Circulation. These two fish classes have two chamber hearts which consist of an atrium and a ventricle. They also have a closed circulatory system along with blood vessels. As far as excretion goes, the kidneys help fish control the amount of water in their bodies. It concentrates waste and returns as much water to the body as needed after producing waste. Their response system has olfactory bulls that are involved with the sense of smell. The cerebrum is responsible for voluntary activities of the body. The cerebellum, on the other hand, coordinates every body movement. Finally, the medulla oblongata has control over the functioning over a lot of the internal organs. Most fish move by alternately contracting paired sets of muscles on either side of the backbone, creating S-shaped curves that move down the fish's body. This force is what propels the fish forward. Because their body tissues are made more dense than the water they swim in, sinking is an issue for fish who are cartilaginous. In reproduction, these fishes have separate sexes. They either have internal or external fertilization. They are more commonly known to be oviparous, which is when the eggs hatch outside the body of the parent but some are viviparous, which is when birth is given inside the body of the parent. The first main difference that we've already established is that the fishes in the Chondrichthys class are basically made up of cartilage, unlike the fishes in the Osteichthys class, which are bony fish. Another difference includes their swim bladder. Well, the Osteichthys are actually the only class that have a swim bladder, as we confirmed before. This gives them the advantage to adjust their buoyancy freely, meaning they'll be able to float on water and swim, also to stop swimming at any time they want, as opposed to the class chondrichthys that do not have a swim bladder, and in fact, they have to be swimming all the time, or else they'll just sink to the bottom. Another difference in their body plan includes their scales. Cartilaginous fish, also known as class chondrichthys, have plesoid scales, meaning tiny, rough scales are part of their integumentary system, which is their skin. Class Osteichthys actually have scales called cycloid and tenoid, which are much more thin and translucent skin and is on the outer layer. The final difference we were able to find that is a small but still significant difference between the two classes involve their jaw to skull. Chondrichthys are able to move their upper jaw independently due to there being no such connection between their jaw and skull, but for Osteichthys, their upper jaw is connected with the skull and the skull contains only somewhere around 63 tiny bony parts. They also do not have eyelids as opposed to chondrichthys where they tend to have eyelids. Finally, their ecology. Fish in general are very important to our ecosystem because they contribute essential nutrients to their habitat, helping to regulate their food web. They are an important food source not only to humans but to other organisms. Without them, the food system structure would collapse. Using the sharks again as an example, Sharks are at the top of numerous food chains and keep vital habitats and seagrass beds healthy. 
We need sharks to continue regulating the marine waters ecosystem and to maintain the balance between their habitats and the population of their prey stable.